Well, later on in the season, we always have questions about, is it too late to make it worth it to spray? Can I still spray for bugs out there or am I just wasting my time? Well, not just bugs, but weeds, diseases. How about plant growth regulators? I mean, there are all these things late in the season. So for Darren and me, we do get a lot of calls at this time of the year questioning whether something is worth it or is it not. So we'll talk through kind of our thought process on that whole thing. So as we've got this rain cloud passing overhead, I'm just thinking about if our beans could catch one more rain, there's still more time. They could put on more flowers, more pods, and we could have more yield. Yeah, one more rain, several more rains, because August a lot of times is when beans are made. We need rain late in the season, and then we can have great yield a lot of times, even if earlier in the year it's been bad. If we've had drought like we did in 2012, didn't matter. We caught some rains in August, we still had six 60 bushel soybeans. So what you're saying is we still have a chance and there's still a time where we could have a disease, a bug, a weed, whatever, and it could take away from our yield potential. Right. And that's what we're talking about. If our beans still haven't started to senesce, the leaves haven't started to turn yellow, there's still a chance and there's still hope that we could put on more flowers and more pots. And as long as that's the case, I'm concerned about what we've got out here. Now, if you've got a year where your beans are huge and they're all filled in and you say, man, all I've got is a ground rig, I don't want to go through and tear up a whole bunch of my beans trying to spray, that may be a consideration. But if you can hire an airplane, then it really isn't a consideration. You could still treat that field no matter how late it gets to be. You could, but then that changes the economic threshold. So if I can treat myself and I figure, well, hey, I'm already out there spraying for bugs. Now I want to use a fungicide, for example. I have zero cost for application because I was out there already. Yeah, but or fungicide, if, Brian, it's so well, late in the year for fungicide. No, We've got to get out there ahead of this disease. That's the problem. You yeah. know, we look at the ideal timing for fungicide. We're talking about right at full bloom or maybe first pod. Not necessarily. Not R4, R4. Or five when we get into August. Not it's getting pretty late. Okay, let's say you have white mold or you're concerned about white mold. You're just talking about those big beans. Let's say I treated it R2 with a fungicide, a full rate. That's going to give me hopefully a couple weeks worth of residual. And then I come back maybe at R4. So maybe right at this time is when I'm going to go spray. So my well, good hope, luck with that program. Well, it's, what do you mean it's good pretty, luck? That's exactly tough. what you want to do is do two shots if you've got a bad disease like white mold that you're real concerned about. So I, I, I definitely do not think it's too late to spray I would fungicide do two in some shots. cases. I would do two shots on white mold, but the problem is those two shots had to happen a lot earlier. With disease control, what I'm talking about is you have to be out there before you have a disease. You can't see all these things like, oh no, I've got brown stem rot. I can see it all over my field. You're too late. You've already lost your yield. Now you may go out there and stop it from expanding, but I don't know that you're really going to save all that much yield at nope, this point. No, but I, I'm going to disagree with that 100% because at this point, I think if we get a couple late rains, we can add 15 bushels onto the beans just like that. So if you have disease setting in, you're going to lose that 15 bushels. So well, I just think you need to take a look at what are my conditions? Do I already have a bunch of disease? When did I spray fungicide? That kind of thing. But anyway, coming back to this aerial application, that's where we started with the whole thing. I may look at, okay, I've got $8 for an application there. I can treat for $3 myself if let's say the only thing I am going out to spray for is bugs. Okay, so the difference is I got $5 gap there. Well, that changes my economic threshold just a little bit. So I have to find a few more bugs out there if I'm going to treat with a plane as opposed to treating myself. When you talk about all this extra yield potential, I think the big yield potential comes if we can stop the bugs. That's where I see a lot of problems late in the season. We get some pod clipping with bean leaf beetles. We get grasshoppers moving in and defoliating. Uh, we got all kinds of issues that can pop up late, and it's so inexpensive to treat for bugs. Even if you have to hire that aerial application that costs you eight bucks for the plane, you're only gonna spend two or three bucks for insecticide. So it's still less than the cost of one bushel to get those acres treated. So if you need to spray for bugs, there is no question in my mind that's going to pay for you, even late in the season, Right now, you've got everything hanging out there. You've got all those pods in your plants. You can't afford to have a bug chewing on it. It's a whole different deal than early in the season if, oh, a bug's going to chew on a leaf here or there. Who cares? This time of year, though, you've got your flowers out there and you've got all your pods. You can't afford insect feeding at all. The other thing is when you have bugs feeding on your crop, you have more disease. And sometimes that just means the beans are going to shrivel up a little bit. They're going to be discolored. They're going to look bad. It doesn't necessarily hurt yield a tremendous amount. But especially if you are a seed grower, for example, Example, you want those beans looking nice at the end of the year. Well, weeds are the other thing, Brian. We've got a lot of Roundup resistant weeds that have popped through a number of treatments this year because, let's face it, a lot of the products that we're going out there with are just contact killers. So yeah, we can burn off that first flush or that second flush, but you know what? We've got a field right here where we aren't completely closed. We didn't. We got the beans planted late. 
the canopy didn't completely fill in, and now we've got a few more weeds poking through. And spraying them late is a big question you guys have. I've already sprayed twice. Do I really need to spray a third time? Well, that's really debatable because what are you gonna spray with this late in the season? Round up your off-label at this point. And plus it's not gonna kill a lot of those weeds. Right, just about every product you're off-label, so what are you gonna do? So what some farmers will do is they're gonna go in real late in the season with a pre-harvest burn down. You might be able to get by with that. You gotta look at the label. There are some products, like Roundup for example, that might be three day or seven day pre-harvest interval. So just take a look at the label. But you know, right now here in the middle of August, am I really gonna spray these beans? I don't think so. What I'm probably gonna do is send Darren out to pull some of those weeds. Oh, there we go. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> but honestly, that is what's happening. A lot of guys are going out and hand weeding, yep. uh, whether it's with a, a full crew of people with you know, either pulling the weeds or with hose, whatever it may be. If you've got a problem weed, you've got to think about how many seeds are going to be produced. Like on water hemp or palm or pigweed, for example, you could have a million seeds per plant. And if you've got a million seeds in a small area or several million in a small area, you're going to be fighting that weed for at least five to seven years, if not more. So you've got to get those weeds under control if they're bad. Now, the other thing is, if you just see one weed here or there, you may say, well, that's no big deal. There's just one weed here or there. I look at it the other way. It's no big deal. Go pull them. Get them out of your field. Don't let them go to seed. Why would you do that? If you just leave one weed scattered here and there, now you're going to have one patch scattered here and there for the next few years. It's not worth it. You got to get out there and get those weeds under control. Well, once again, when it comes to late season spraying in soybeans, there are a few things that you can debate whether or not you're going to spray fungicide this late. Insecticides, probably worth it. Spraying weeds this late, probably not worth it, but you just need to work with a good agronomist and get some recommendations for your farm. But all I can tell you is on our farm, I'm still expecting top yields and August is a very important month. Well, especially if we get some rain like this and especially if we can keep our weed of the week out of our fields. Can you identify this week's weed? 